Hello and welcome to CityWorks Connect. Thank you for stopping by for a listen and we hope we, you enjoy. I am Cindy Curletti, a manager for the CityWorks marketing team. Joining me today is Matt Harmon and Josh Stressner, both business development managers here at CityWorks. We continue to practice social distancing as we work from home and slowly return to the office. Uh, Josh is currently in Wisconsin at his home and Matt and I are here at the CityWorks headquarters in Sandy, Utah in separate offices. Uh, the information provided here is intended for information purposes only and may not be incorporated into any contract. So Matt, before we get started, talk to us about our objective with these quick episodes and why we have developed this platform. Sure, Cindy, thanks. So we do a lot of webinars, we go, we have formal conferences, and we go to a bunch of trade shows, but what we wanted to do with Connect is turn it into more of a casual discussion with us, hopefully with customers and other leaders in the industry, and just share ideas. So while we are, are Josh and I are, you know, we were talking as we were preparing for this episode that I'm, we're entering our 13th and 14th years at CityWorks, and this is what we do. We love it. We love the stories of our customers. We love hearing how CityWorks is impacting our communities around the country and, and broader around the world. And we felt CityWorks Connect would be a great platform to just share those stories in a more casual way. So that's the goal here is to really just bring voices from different areas of the market, talk to our clients, talk to potential clients, and of course our partner community as well. And so today, one of the first things is we talked about an episode, we wanted to review dashboards. So that's kind of the idea here is we'll pick a topic that we find fascinating and we'll have some discussions about it. And so this one, we wanted to go with dashboards. And so Josh, if, if you think of a dashboard, right, we know they're everywhere now, but the history of dashboards, what, what comes to mind to you? Uh, for me, the the first dashboard that I ever used was was probably in my my very first car, my 1987 Nissan. All right. How about you, Cindy? Dashboards, the car does that resonate as well? It does. Yep. That's the very first thing I think of, and I think of here just because I've been here a while and I hear that term rolling around the halls. So. Yeah, I. So here's a dashboard. I looked up the history of this word because I was curious. In fact, at our last user conference, I did a session on kind of analytics and reporting. And I was interested in where the term dashboard came from. And it started in the early 1900s with cars. Uh, that's when it really became a, a way to measure data and look at things in real time. And so that really was interesting to me that, yeah, we take this for granted every day. We look at our car, we see how much gas is there, how fast we're going, but really you can't drive a vehicle without knowing what's going on with that piece of equipment, that machine. And so car manufacturers started putting these dashboards, these dials into their the vehicles to help drivers know stats, real-time stats about what's going on. Uh, I recently got back from a road trip just through southern Utah, and yeah, imagine trying to drive without knowing how much gas you have left. And so as we apply that thought here, you know, as, as machines and everything is advanced, did you guys catch the recent Falcon 9 launch? Yeah. The SpaceX launch? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, awesome. That was pretty awesome. Josh, I think you guys had a uh you, you i don't know it seemed like a bigger deal in your family tell, tell us about that experience from you yeah i've got a, a seven-year-old um and a 15-year-old and you know they you know they don't have a whole lot of history with uh you know you know shooting a rocket from american soil to the you know, to the to the space station i don't even know that my son even knew there was a space station he was just enthralled when he saw that um, you know there was this thing that actually you know orbited around around the Earth. We, one night we could see it from our house, just up in the sky. We could see the you know kind of the light, and I don't think he put two and two together until he actually saw, you know, there's this monster thing that 
you know, you, the countdown went on all day because, you know, it got uh, it got canceled the time before. So we were kind of holding our breath that it would happen. But we watched it, you know, for hours leading up to it, all the pregame, all the postgame, and, you know, just kind of seeing it dock and, you know, watching those actual people you know, go from go from the ground to the to the space station. It was it was just fascinating for him. He was uh, uh, it was kind of a kind of a game changer, you know. Changes perspective for the for the seven seven year old mind. Yeah, my so I, I'm into model rockets. My father in law, when I got married, he he's always been into model rockets, and so we go out in the west desert of Utah and shoot rockets. And it's interesting because most of the time, like you know Apollo 13, the movie, and we we I think of rocket dashboards as more analog. You know, a bunch of switches. And, right. and dials in, you know, a pretty, I mean, old tech, right? Analog tech. And to see the the cockpit of that Dragon space vehicle, it was just awesome. I mean, touch screen everywhere. Imagine all the, you know, the information that is so much easier to consume now. And and I thought that was like, that, that was really neat to see that go off and, and see where the space industry is headed. Right. Um, so let's go a little bit of history and, and just other dashboards that have impacted the world today. And so I'm going to bring one up here that uh, we'll all be familiar with. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So this one right here. So Cindy and Josh, do you guys remember the first time you saw this dashboard? Let's start with Cindy. Yep. I actually um, got the link. I believe there was an email that went around here at the uh, through Brian, somebody sent it out, and I pulled it up, and I was actually working from home, sent the, the link off to my sister, who happens to be a nurse. Um, she works in a acute care for adolescents, and um, they were heavily impacted down in the Costa Mesa, California area, and she got this, got her hands on it, and just thanked me. They use this every single day, even today, and it has helped them with their you know, understanding how bad things have gotten and how they needed to, you know, change their their work environment. Yeah, it. I think Brian Haslam, our CEO, he sent this to a bunch of people. I don't know who all got it, but I, that's where I first saw it. He's like, hey, Esri's kind of helping track the COVID and the coronavirus. And so I clicked on it and have since shared it numerous times to many family members. And it's just cool that those of us that are familiar with Esri that are in this space, you know, we know the impact of this, but to see it like go so broadly and, you know, Cindy, your example, I know Josh, you had a, a, a different example with, with how you got informed about this dashboard. Yeah. Don't tell Brian, I, I must've missed his email, but I actually <laughs> got it. Uh, <laughs> I got it from my wife. And um, I remember that because we, it was right when things were really early and uh, and my daughter was gonna go to Hawaii with my mom and they had this trip planned for like 18 months. And um, and the map, we'll just say the map looked very different at that time. Like the, the dot density was basically centered over, you know, over Asia and was just starting in Europe. So it was, it, it was decided, well, it's fine. Let's go ahead with the Hawaii vacation because I think there's two dots in, in Hawaii. Um, I actually ended up going along because at that point we were kind of uh, kind of shut down anyway. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll take a quick vacation. Um, but to see how everything changed, um, you know, really, really quickly, like it, that's that's the whole point of these dashboards is that the, the map and the numbers look very different from, you know, when I was looking at it and, you know, March. And in March it was just, well, that's something that's happening on the other side of the world. But you know, you get you get these trends and it did really life comes at you fast. Yeah, it this is like everything a dashboard needs to be, right? Uh mm -hmm. it's tracking uh, a really important issue that's impacting the whole world and it's helping people make better decisions, more informed decisions with almost real time data. And that's pretty amazing. And, you know, I, I sent this and said, hey, you know, that conference I go to in San Diego every year down in, uh, you know, Southern California, that, that's the Esri conference. And this is the company 
know, this is one of the products that that company puts out there for the world to consume. And, and so let's bring it into like CityWorks and more our, our corner of the market. And so Josh, in your career at CityWorks, you, I think you're going on 13 years or just completed 13 years. So, so this has largely been your job here. Like talk to me about how dashboards has impacted your role as a business development manager and our sales team, but then also how you've seen it transitioned and, and help our clients, our customers. Yeah, for, for me, kind of as a um, kind of a user of dashboards to make my work more effective, um, it was really when we bought Salesforce um, as our uh, as our customer um, customer management software. We we used to have a system prior to that, but it was largely tabular, basically a, a glorified spreadsheet. Um, and it was a really it was really good it was a really good method to actually dump data into, but to actually get that data out in a meaningful way, it was just really not possible. Um, when we got Salesforce, that kind of all changed. You know, we were able to move all of that kind of raw, unuseful data into Salesforce, and almost immediately we had, you know, actionable stuff. You know, we were actual actually be able to, you know, actually act on some of this, uh, um, you know, some of this information that the that the dashboards would actually, you know, sort of show. So that was that was kind of, you know, for me the the first, you know, sort of make me more effective dashboard that I had used. Um, regarding in CityWorks, the, the first, you know, kind of in the CityWorks context, use of dashboards was when uh, when we productized EURL. Um, and I, you're going to talk about this more here in a little bit. But at the time when EUR, EURL was uh, was first productized, it I saw it as kind of the the elusive read-only uh, read only CityWorks, where, you know, instead of being a, a user or a, a GIS or whatever, who was actually just kind of sitting at their desktop, interacting with CityWorks, being able to see the information and the data. Um, it became a way to actually make it, make the data and, and actually information available to folks outside of the folks that actually use CityWorks. You know, it became the way to open it up to people who who don't have to log into CityWorks, don't need training in CityWorks. It's just here's a map, click on the dots on the map, and you can get you know kind of a sense of what's going on in the network. You know, almost like a dashboard in a car. You know, here's the diagnostics of the network, and um, and it's in near real time. Uh, for me, that was a big sort of aha moment. Yeah, I so I remember. I mean, this is probably 2008, 2009. You know, CityWorks server, the browser app, really starts to to grow up, and and it's getting out there. People are adopting it, and the inbox. Right, remember how cool that inbox was, where we could take a saved search, a query of information, and create a list, an action item list, a to-do list, uh, a historic list, and then also turn that into a chart. Yeah. Um, and so that was like, uh, it's just like a game changer moment. And that's where you know the tech industry at large has, has pivoted towards these dashboards. I think every website you go to now, there's some little graphic or, or call out or some icon or something that just refers you to a dashboard to consume data to help tell the story about the article and, and so not even url yeah go ahead and not even like even websites but even in print which yeah. is kind of counter to what a dashboard needs to be near real time but even in print though you know you, you do people have grown so accustomed to having that i think that you know they throw that into you know newspapers and magazines because the infographic is just it's just kind of the way people are just kind of oh, yeah, it's awesome yeah it, it i mean we just I, it, it's a great thing right it's one of these things that you look at over time and and uh it's at the city level so i did a lot of implementations early on and the data that cities collect it's usually not the issue so cities and utilities are our typical customers if you go into any city hall or utility building, there's probably file cabinets like this, right? And Everywhere. so data usually isn't the problem. It's how do we take that data and turn it into something meaningful and actionable and, and better understand the information that we're collecting. So EURL, it's a great story because that is a, um, that was one that 
that was an aha moment for me too. And one of the first customers that sent us an EURL dashboard or an EURL enabled external app was the city of Longview, Texas. And I've got it up right here. So this is still up on their website. This is a live look at their data. And all it's showing, it's very simple. It's a map, uh, but it's just showing information about building permits in their community. Uh, and so this is something that I find interesting, right? Because development's happening and it could be anything from, hey, does my neighbor have a permit for the swimming pool they're building? Or, or you know, is there a zoning change that's gonna impact my community that I need to be aware of? And so I, I think I was at a rug asking for examples of EURL and, and Longview had sent this to me and and I'm sure there were others, but man, I still show it because it's a it's an idea, it's an example of what you can do with data in CityWorks. Um, similar to the John Hopkins dashboard we looked at, let's look at this one. So this is from St. George, Utah. Uh, this is showing their graffiti report. So let's break this down a little bit, Josh. I, I know we've looked at this. It's it's a it's it's a real cool, and they've done a really good job with it. But tell me what you like about this dashboard. Yeah, the three things I really like about it is first across the top, you can see there's actually a, a, a spot that you can actually have an input. You can actually put in date ranges. You can choose by year and, and that sort of thing. And that's that's just another dimension of the da of a good dashboard is really being able to show trending. You know, so year over year, um, showing everything. You know, again the hot spots. Um, the other thing is just the overall theme of it. It um, you know it's graffiti. So this is something that affects really everybody in the community. Um, you know whether you live by the graffiti, walk by the graffiti, you know your kids go play in a park by the graffiti. It's 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 affecting everybody, and so it's really you know, it's very pervasive. I'm sure in the in the organization, and and again affects everybody. And last thing is on the on the left, and this is one that I don't see a lot of, but I think it's actually really powerful is the the actual breakdown of the costs, because mm -hmm. that kind of yeah. you know that kind of drives it home. You know, everybody, you know, if you're, you know, not a kid, has a has a sense of, you know, context when it comes to cost. You know, $6,000 is an awful lot of money to, uh, you know, to basically fix vandalism. You know, and that, uh, I think that really does a good job of kind of showing, you know, cities, you know, cities doing a lot of work. They're, uh, you know, putting in the effort to make, to make the city, make the community, you know, a better place. So this, this is a really cool dashboard. Yeah, it. And and the cost that is one that I don't see a lot on these dashboards because you know a lot of people don't realize the cost of a of a graffiti abatement you know six thousand dollars and you know that's that's quite a bit of money that could be spent elsewhere if we're educating and and helping our community understand the challenge of of graffiti. Yeah, this is this is a really cool. It's also got all the right things, right? It's dynamic. I can click, and it's updating based off of pie slice and so forth. So great one, great example by St. George. Another one that that we'll go into here is another favorite of mine. Now this isn't using Insight or Operations Dashboard or like CityWorks. This is CityWorks data being used and consumed by Microsoft Power BI. And so this is the city of Oakland. And so they take service requests through CityWorks and they have since 2010, I believe here. And so another just kind of really cool example of, of a dashboard that's helping organizations understand their, their environment, understand their, their cities, their communities. So Cindy, I'm gonna bring you on this one. What do you think of this dashboard as you look at just the information here? Well, I love the colors. How's that? But Perfect. I do love the year and the progression there. Is, um, talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, can this, you, you can toggle that back and forth, right? Yeah, so this is interactive here. So the, yeah. what, here's the one thing that I, I really like about this one. Look at how they're collecting service requests. So right now, if we go up to the current year, right? Look at how that changes and look at phone versus their mobile app, mm. right? And so if we look at this trend, I mean, 2010, they didn't have a mobile app. You can see almost the moment they started rolling that out and see how that has 
impacted how they're collecting these requests, right? Not a yeah, phone call through the mobile app. That's real time uh, ROI right there. Right. That's really cool. Yep. And then of course, you know, you know, the, the different slices have different information and, you know, obviously illegal dumping is a major issue there, but that's, what's cool about an open platform like CityWorks is we can take that data and serve it up, you know, in, in this case, Microsoft Power BI, which is great. The last one here that I'm going to, I really like this because I'm a big, you know, city planning engineering type person. That's kind of a, one of my interests. So I like to see the impact of how development changes our, our cities. And so this is one by Topeka, Kansas. It's really cool. It's showing all their capital improvement projects and it's really interactive. So if you want to just see, you know, here's one for a traffic signal, right? And it takes me into the, looks like I'm a, there we go. Sorry, internet's a little slow, but it takes me into the details of that project, where it's at, and then some details on it, right? The budget, how much they've spent, and so on and so forth. So this is another great example of just getting information out there to the public to help help us all understand the communities that we live in. Okay, so the last thing we wanna do here in this episode is I'm gonna jump into CityWorks. And we're gonna build a quick dashboard. So I'm gonna do a quick review of the Respond dashboard that's pretty new, and then go in and create a, an enterprise URL dashboard using my ArcGIS.com account. Okay. And then Josh and Cindy, you guys let me know if there's anything you want to talk about as I'm showing this here. So I'm in Respond, and those of you that may not be familiar with Respond, it's it's a it's been around for a while, but it's it's a newer user interface to look at CityWorks data and offer some value and some functionality that's a little bit different than Office. So one of the things we want to do in CityWorks Connect is kind of do a how-to moment, right? So I know that there's a lot of customers out there that are learning and growing with CityWorks. And so this is kind of a how-to of, of some tools and tips and tricks that might help you in your implementations and your deployments of CityWorks. So I'm gonna open up the PLL inspection dashboard. So this is looking at mostly building or engineering inspections for my community development department. And so I'm logged into CityWorks. I can share my dashboard, I can create my own, and one thing that's really nice about this dashboard is it is it is that modern view, right? Where you can have these different widgets and different charts and graphs to optimize your layout for you as a user of CityWorks. Um, Josh, we, we talked about these as we were looking at just some of the new things that have come into CityWorks. What's your favorite data type currently? I know it changes. Yeah, so I like the the count, the the pending inspection 87 count okay. down there. It's leaves leaves nothing for uh, uh, leaves no opportunity for for mistakes. It's just kind of in your face. Um, that goes up and down as you've got pending you know pending inspections, and uh, um, and it's just really simple. Plus, it was okay. always in Ops dashboard, and I always wanted to get it in CityWorks, and I was just really pumped when we got it. I know, I know, it's just. Like, yeah, how many inspections we have today? We have 87, it's right there. So when, when dashboards are created, you know, if we go into the edit session here, this is what's unique, right? You, we couldn't do this in inbox where we could right. just drag sizes, you know, and add rows really quickly, add columns really quickly, or like swap places. So Josh likes 87, well, I just created a, you know, a new column where I can, put that data more front and center. And so the ease of the dashboard creation, I just love it. It, yeah. it uh, if you're not using this now, you know, use it. Uh, if you need help kind of getting it set up or whatever, just you know, contact us. But this is like productivity at, at an organization is efficiently using and consuming your data. Um, okay, so the data in each one of these, so if we go to this permitting summary, right? We got issued permits 29. So this data is built on what we have always called a saved search. 
Okay, so there's a, a query tool in Respond that lets you query your CityWorks data and then you can save it just like you could always do in Office, going back to desktop, the save search and, and so forth is just, you know, CityWorks. So you can turn, as Josh talked about earlier, we can turn those save searches into an eURL. And that eURL can then be shared. It's a service that can be interpreted by the Esri solutions, operations dashboard and web map, and then shared. Okay, and so that's how like Longview, Texas and Topeka, Kansas and, uh, and others are sharing their data outside of their organization. So what I've got in this here, this eURL, I'm gonna click on it. I've created one right here, a CityWorks Connect example. So this one is looking at the work orders that have been created over the last 365 days. So everything in the last year. And when I've got URL, I can you know, download to CSV or a shape file, but then this is where we really kind of open this up to dashboarding. So this isn't a, an error message. This is the service, the feature service that the Esri application can interpret. So I'm just gonna copy this and come into my ArcGIS.com account. Okay, so I've got my content here. Hopefully this looks familiar to the GIS users. And all I'm gonna do is go to my map. And once I'm in the map, I can add a layer here. I can add it from the web. All right, and I'm gonna paste in that layer. All right, so paste that in there. It's gonna va validate it. And it's gonna bring in that work order history. Okay, so there's all those work orders that are in that safe search. Now, what's cool, as Josh mentioned earlier, this is real time, right? So as new work orders are added, the map is automatically reflected there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, we'll call this CityWorks Connect. Oh, I can spell, how about CW Connect? There we go. Got to add a tag, some CityWorks info. Okay, I can save that. And then once I save it, I can share it. And I'm going to share it as a web app. Okay, so this is a little simple wizard. Create my web app. And then I've got options, right? You can use this data in different ways, but what we're going to do is use it as an operations dashboard. Okay. And so Esri, again, open platforms. It's, if, if you, I mean, that is one of the strengths of, of open platforms is this, right? So now I've got my CityWorks data in this operations dashboard environment, and I can add different widgets, different information, graphs, and so forth. So if I wanna do a pie chart of this data, there's that service that I loaded, okay? And so now I just have to build out my dashboard. Okay, so we'll do it by asset group. Um, you know, I could go in and give it a label and other information. We'll add a title. Okay, so work orders by asset type. Okay. And then once I've got that in there, okay, I can go back to my dashboard and now I'm starting to build this out. Now I'm not gonna go through and show you how to do this. We have a full webinar that you can connect up and, and watch on cityworks.com, our webpage. And then there's been other you know, conference sessions and other things that talk about how you can build out an operations dashboard with CityWorks. So let's, let's end this episode. Um, Josh or Cindy, are there anything else you guys want to add here? I love the power of the dashboard. The dashboards yeah. are cool. And these episodes, so we're right about 30 minutes. That's about where we want to keep these. Uh, but really what we want to do here is if you guys have dashboards, send it to us so we can share it. And you know, we love seeing the information that you guys are, are building and how you're using the technology to better your communities. So you can find me, uh, there's my email address here. I'm on LinkedIn or Twitter. Josh is the same. And then there's also just info at cityworks.com, an email address that you can, uh, you can 
submit and that'll go to our marketing group and, and we can get a hold of your dashboards, screenshots, URLs, whatever you want to share with the user community. And um, and yeah, we, we hope to hear from you and hopefully this was informational and we'll pick up some other topics and, and put out some more CityWorks Connects episodes in the future. That's great. Awesome. Thanks, Matt and Josh. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks everybody. Yeah, it was really good. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe and well until next time.